Welcome back to Adventures in Reach. If you're new to winter camping, you will need to know how your body loses heat, how to stop it, and how to gain it back so that you can try this new adventure and camp confidently. If you look at these thermometers, it's about five to 10 below, uh, I guess five below. And if I step back here, you'll see that I'm literally just wearing a t-shirt out here and some long john bottoms. Uh, I'm actually pretty cold, so I need to get going. So how do we lose heat? One, from evaporation. So if you get wet, we need to get that moisture off your skin. So wipe it down, get the moisture off, and so that it cannot evaporate and pull that warmth with the water that evaporates. So the second what I want to do is I want to put a base layer on. This is cotton, not very useful. It's holding the moisture next to your skin. We sweat all day long, so you are going to have moisture there no matter what. Uh, this could also come from, you know, a spill or uh, getting snow on you. Um, and, and or just, you know, even sweating more additionally because you're working hard. So instead of wearing this, all right, so with the wool base layer, it's wicking it out just a millimeter or two away from the skin and starting that process of moving moisture off my skin and out of my clothing layers. Next is conduction, where heat is transferring from one object to another. Right now, from my legs and feet into the ground. So I'm going to stop that transfer by putting some foam on the ground and separating myself from that object. So this is all about uh, that separation, right? So with my, my footwear, um, what I normally am wearing is mucklucks and I put neos or put them in neos and inside these neos is another piece of foam. So I have the sole of the neo, the foam, the sole of the muckluck, and I have an extra uh, insole, a wool insole in here. So I'm like, you know, inch and a half off the ground. And so I really don't get a lot of um, heat transfer from my feet into the ground. And even though these are totally uninsulated, they make such a huge difference just by that separation. Next thing is radiation. So think about, I am, well, I was warm and uh, I've got my heat is radiating out into the world and the, the, the natural order of things is that the temperature tries to equalize, right? So my body and the earth. So now I'm never going to warm the earth up, but it is going to cool me down. So I need to, to stop my heat from radiating out with insulation. So I have the base layer on, which is great, all synthetic or wool. And then you want to have a mid layer. I'm actually pretty cold here. All right, you want to have a mid layer, uh, some sort of fleece radiation. It's slowing it down. It's still happening. I'm going to put these uh, ski pants on. Oh, okay, um, better, but we're not there yet. Wool works really great. Wool sweater here. Um, more fleeces work well. Uh, I have a, a really old beat up down vest that just keeps your core warm. Also great. I'm going to go with the wool sweater for now. So as we're talking about radiation, you can see I'm just wearing these liner gloves at the moment. Now, obviously gloves are great because you can, you know, have some dexterity to do some chores around camp as opposed to with mittens. Um, but, you know, think of a car radiator, right? It's a, uh, this pipe that's spread out and it's got lots of surface area. My fingers do at this point too. They're really cold. I'm going to heat them up kind of against my stomach or in my armpit. I take anything, any mittens, any gloves I take off, I always put them in a couple layers so that my body can keep them warm for when I need them. So continuing on with the radiation, we'll really stop this with a nice down coat. So we can also think of radiation as if we're next to a frozen lake or uh, rocks, um, and those things are cold, they, they're, they're holding the cold and we're next to them, it's going to be radiating that cold from there to us. All right, so the fourth way 
that we lose heat is through convection. So convection, think about it's water or wind, uh, something cold moving past and taking our heat with it. So wind is the most common. Hopefully you're not falling and moving water in the winter. But if, the, if it's windy and it's bringing it past, you want to really maximize uh, your protection from convection. So uh, think about it this way. I have this hat on and it's, it's pretty warm. It's got fleece, you know, kind of halfway up. Uh, but the top is not, um, is not windproof. And so I can kind of feel the wind moving through that hat. So putting that hood up, prevents more radiation and prevents that convection across the top of my head. And so I'm going to lose less that way. So with the convection, if you want to get the most out of these insulative layers, you want to put a shell layer on. I'm going to throw these mucklucks on. Okay, so negative five and I'm feeling pretty warm right now. The fifth way that we lose heat is through our respiration, our breathing. So now if we can cover our face now we breathe out that warm air and instead of losing all that warmth it kind of gets trapped in here and when I breathe in I get warm air instead of this cold air. I'll leave it down for now just so you can see my mouth. The only thing here is that this gets wet and now you know now you have some evaporative cooling um, so I, I do like to keep uh, two of these on a camping trip so that I can uh, be drying one while the other one is being warm. All right, a couple other things to think about. One is food and water. We need to hydrate and we often forget to hydrate in the winter. These insulated bottles like this are amazing because now at night you can go to bed with tea, with warm hot tea, and we wake up in the middle of the night and drink warm tea. Uh, much better than having an icy water bottle. Our blood is about, is a little over 50% plasma and plasma is, um, largely made up of water. And so if you think about that, we need to drink water to keep our volume of plasma and blood up so that our body has enough blood to spread around um, from our core and to our extremities. Um, if we don't, our body is going to keep that blood where it needs it around the organs, uh, the vital organs in the brain instead of giving it to, you know, unnecessary parts of our body uh, to sustain life, such as our hands. So if you are getting cold or if you want to prevent that, then really make sure that you are drinking frequently and, you know, think about like three liters a day, uh, sometimes more. And yes, you may have to get up and pee at night or pee in a bottle or something, but uh, it's going to be worth it if you're going to be warm. The other thing is food. We need lots of food, you know, more calories than you're used to eating um, in order to stay warm as well. You have to stoke the furnace, so to speak. Uh, think about in the winter, you need carbohydrates, um, hopefully complex carbohydrates for that quicker boost. You need protein for a little longer lasting and fat for even longer lasting um, energy and warmth. And when you go to bed, honestly, you should be drinking you know, hot chocolate with like butter in it and, you know, kind of a fatty, pro high protein, um, high carb meal to really last you through the night. Makes a big difference. So the other thing is cold settles. You saw that it's five degrees below zero um, where I'm at. Now, just down, you could probably just barely see it. Past this hill here is a swamp and uh, kind of a, a river that leads back into a lake. Now down there, it is routinely 10 degrees colder. Another thing to consider when you're cold and camping is how do you get that warmth back? It's partly from preventing your heat from escaping, partly from what I talked about with the food and, and water, and partly from activity. As you use your muscles, you're producing that heat as we all know. So things like cutting firewood and shoveling snow, maybe you're making a snow kitchen, you know, some seats and a a little uh, table area, that is all going to heat you up very quickly. Or you go for a run, you might do sit-ups in your sleeping bag, that sort of thing. The other thing is you can get it from external sources where, you know, hand warmers, or we know the trick of, you know, let's say if this was a Nalgene, you put the boiling water in there, put a sock over top of it, and now you can hold it against your chest um, at the core, or you can put it 
in between your thighs and let that heat go down to your toes. If you're interested in winter camping, I really encourage you to try it out because the landscape just completely changes. It's, it's a totally different look. There's nobody out there. There's no bugs.